so cool. What's happening? <laughs> Number one bucket list item for coming to Cappadocia. Definitely worth coming to. It's one of the most unique things I've ever done. Cheers. 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 Hello from Cappadocia! We finally made it to Cappadocia or Gorham, depending how you what you know it as. So we are currently in the main town of Cappadocia and we're heading to an open air museum to check out all of these what do you call them fairy houses? <laughs> basically cave houses which is awesome so over the next two days i'm going to show you everything there is to see and do in cappadocia slash gorham our first stop of the day is a church that has been built into the into the caves it is supposed to be no filming but i'm going to do my best to sneaky film for you because it looks amazing and if i can't picture it didn't happen basically i have to document everything um, free to enter and it's literally on the pathway up to the open air museum and it's free, I can't get over how free it is. <laughs> free. Um, but yeah, we're gonna head in and it looks great. We are at the Gorham Open Air Museum. Um, it is 54 Turkish Lira to enter, which it does say it's free online. So this is your update, 2019, end of the year. It is 54 um, Turkish Lira. There is an extra paid museum at the um, church at the back, but we didn't go and see it because you see all these little churches throughout basically all of the build, all of the um, mountains. What'd you call them? Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Like, Hills? Yeah, caves. And caves? All the caves are basically either cooking, storage, or a church. But it is very cool because you can kind of see the development of them. Some start very like cave painting looking um, and very unsophisticated, developing into quite a sophisticated um, artwork as well as the architecture inside them. So we're actually inside a church, built inside a cave. It's so crazy. And there's so much different artwork everywhere. And there's so many different churches scattered throughout the whole museum, opening valley thing. It's like crazy, the level of skill they had. Just. <laughs> Definitely worth coming to. It's one of the most unique things I've ever done. I can't think of anything that's been similar to this. So yeah, it's cool. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Um, particularly not worth doing the church because um, you do the first church, which was free this morning. Um, so we did that on the way up here. The church that was free coming up here, that was the UNESCO World Heritage Site, is so amazingly beautiful and looks the exact same as the photos for the dark church. So I take the free one. But that's just me. Um, so now we're gonna head to Love Valley, which is um, all of the pointy mounds. So, well said. 
not phallic at all. <laughs> so we're gonna try and get make our way there on the bus. We'll see how we go. So we made it to Love Valley. Um, as you can see, they're a little bit phallic. <laughs> These are the famous fairy chimneys of Turkey. This is like on every tourism board you see, so it's cool to finally come and see it in person. Um, there's apparently there's two points, which we didn't know, so things I would rather have known, I'll tell you, is that you can either come up here to the lookout spot and there's a bunch of cool restaurants, really cool photo opportunities to kind of see the valley for what it is at the top, but you can also walk down through all of the um, mounds, <laughs> shall we say. Um, so we're gonna start up here, take some photos, fly the drone a bit, and then we're gonna head down and do a little bit of a hike through the valley. And yeah, it's very, very good. We ended up getting a cab, it was 35 lira, and it saved a lot of time. So cabs here are quite cheap, unlike the rest of Turkey. So we have just been hanging around town, looking at shops and eating some delicious food, which you will see if you watch my Turkish food video. Um, however, we have a very exciting um, night planned. We're doing a Turkish experience dinner show thing. So we're about to head to that. But before we head off, we thought this hotel has a rooftop bar and it would be a miss to not come up and watch the sunset. So that's what we've done. Um, it's a, just enjoying the last bit of sun before we go out to our dinner event. It looks crazy beautiful with all the little lights in all the little caves and the moss is growing, glowing green and the sunsets are beautiful orange. It's so great. Otherworldly, I'd say. <laughs> Traditional Turkish drinks, I thought I'll try that on camera, both of us. Okay. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I'm likes it too. That's strong. I like it. Does it taste like medicine? It tastes like That's herbs. Yeah, it's great. I feel like yeah, I'm breathing strong. alcohol. And you're in a circular room, so everyone can see all the music and the dances. So far, very good. All the food, so good that I forgot to film it. But um, I don't really know what, I can't really tell you what it is, so I don't know. Um, this thing is good. Mushrooms are good. Don't know what this is, but it's good. They also give you a bottle of wine each. <laughs> it's gonna be. And, and spirits on top, which is the thing we drank before, so. Are you excited for all the food and the chef?
So it is the next morning. Dinner was amazing. Um, the show was great. They had different dancers from each different um, section of Turkey um, in their traditional dance in each one. And the belly dance was amazing. Like, I can't even, like, and there was, they got people like from the audience to try and do it just to prove how hard belly dancing is. But she was amazing. So that was a huge, like, bucket list item tick for me was to see um, a belly dancer in Turkey. Now, today is the big day. Today is ticking off the number one, number one bucket list item for coming to Cappadocia. We got up at 5 a.m. and we're about to head out and we're gonna go get on a hot air balloon. Fingers crossed it goes up and the weather's still good. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go hot air ballooning. And this, I've wanted a hot air balloon for so long, so I'm like so excited. I hope nothing goes wrong. What's happening? We officially made it into the balloon. Um, it was a little touch and go for a minute. Didn't think I was getting up here. I almost lost my shit. But we made it and that's what's important. So this is my first time hot air ballooning. I have wanted to do this for years and I wanted to be in Turkey for the first time I've ever hot air ballooned. And we're doing it. And so we're like... rainbow one which is great and it's um, over the Love Valley and there's all the beautiful um, hot air balloons all who got up before us <laughs> yeah this has been I wouldn't say the perfect start because it would have been nicer if we didn't have the drama but um, a really good like finale to our trip So the company we're doing it is with Grow Balloons. <laughs> they pack you a little breakfast, which is super cute. So you get a juice box, a little cake thing, and then a Danish. So enough time to eat them. She's enjoying it. <laughs> currently up so high. We're currently at 500 meters or four. We've four? traveled four kilometers. Well, we've traveled four kilometers and we're up 500 meters. Really high. And there's no seatbelts. They did in like 10 minutes. Very scary if you look down. <laughs> Did 
So we finally made it back onto ground safe and I'm so happy that I finally got to do hot air ballooning and I got to do it in Cappadocia. So even though we got up a bit late, the result was that we could stand on the cliff and see all the balloons as well as then eventually get in there. So it kind of got the best of both worlds of seeing it from a balloon and also from the ground. But Goodbye balloon. <laughs> Goodbye balloon. Thank you balloon. <laughs> Cheers! Did it! Oh, we didn't yeah. die. Okay. Celebrate life. <laughs> Survival. It's like berry fruit juice with mixed with champagne. It's like super nice. Mm. Probably good because it's a bit early to be drinking. <laughs> so. but if it's in juice, it's fine, right? <laughs> it's official now. We can fly a hot air balloon. Yeah, I think we're that's pilots. What, I think that's what this means. You just write your name there in pilot. <laughs> It's how university should work. <laughs> now we're gonna head back to the hotel and then probably get a bit of sleep because we got up so early this morning. Are you in here? So our final thing we're doing in Cappadocia is an underground city. There are two to choose from and we've chosen the Kalamaki one because it is more intense um, and more intricate and deeper. So I thought if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it well. Um, it is 42 lira to get in. All the prices are sure to be completely off online, so definitely double everything that you read online. Um, still not too expensive, but just so you have enough money left. <laughs> so yes, we're gonna head in and try not to get lost in the caves. Menu coming up, and that's how you know which way you're going. You are definitely going to watch your head. When did people stop living here? That's a living room. Basically, if you imagine this is basically the Titanic, it's similar in that the rich people were on the top, and the lower down you have to go is where the poorer people are. So this would have been a rich person's living room because we're near the top and it's quite big and by the time we get to the bottom it'd be a little bit of a living space. Yeah. For reference for anyone tall, I am 5'2". <laughs> yeah, there so is a lot of crouching. if you're tall or at least not a tiny person like me, Get ready to crouch or wear a helmet. It's pretty long. Oh my god. Does it get lower? How are you now? So this big circular rock is essentially a door and people would pick it up and move it and that's how they would close the house area in here. Um, and there's a hole in the middle so you can see who's out who's on the other side, who's on the other side. So it's like a peephole, the very first peephole. Um, and also remember all of these caverns were like pitch black. They used to have candlelight with oils and that's how they used to see, which makes everything a lot scarier. The underground city, um, the one we're at, the K1, um, is 12 layers deep, whereas the other one I think is only 4 layers deep. So this is the one I want to do because it's more extensive. It is definitely for the small and short, so if you are a big, tall and big wide person, just make sure you go to that before you come because you will get stuck in these caves. Um, but this has been a very fun last day. We've gone super high. 
kind of super low in Cappadocia, um, starting with like the hot air balloon and then finishing on an underground city. The like, best way to finish this trip. Turkey's been so fun. I love everything. The food's been great. The people are so cute and friendly. They're so happy. Um, things that would be helpful to know would be that it's very, very, very cash based. No one's checking card. And secondly, a lot of people speak English, so the language barrier is it is as much as you think. And in terms of conservative wear, because I know it is an Islamic country, I've been running around in short dresses and short sleeves, and it hasn't been a problem other than when I go into like a religious building like a mosque. So just keep that in mind. But other than that, it's just like going to any other city slash country. Um, it has some of the most unique nature, and some of the most friendly people, and best food. So like it's so so underrated of a place to go. So hopefully this video has given you all of the good tips and tricks and ideas of everything to see and do in Cappadocia. Um, tell me in the comments below if there's anything I missed because I'm sure there's more to do here because it's such a great place. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to hit subscribe so I can see you next time on my next video. Bye.